Rasmus Hansen, Affinity CEO and founder, joining us now. Affinity tracks coronavirus data. The, the UK data seem to be stabilising at the moment, Rasmus. Uh, thanks for, for joining us. Um, we're getting around 10,000 new cases uh, a day. It ticked up very sharply. The delta on the delta uh, was very quick. But now we're seeing stabilisation. What does that mean for the rest of Europe, where we're starting to now see pockets of the delta variant popping up? Well, I think that the Delta variant is really the key cause of concern throughout Europe at, at the moment. We are seeing the Delta variant has become the dominant strain in Portugal. We are seeing increased cases, although from a fairly low level in Spain, in, in France, in Germany, in, in Italy. And it's a very likely scenario that we see the same pattern as we've seen in, in the UK so far. So an increase in the Delta variant uh, over time, and that basically becomes the dominant, uh, dominant strain. So far, Europe has been quite good at containing it, but I think long term that seems to be unlikely to, to happen. So it's, for Europe, it's really, uh, as it is for the UK, it's really a, a race against the vaccination. It's a, the vaccines are rolling out fairly fast, but I think what, where, where the uh, Delta variant really changes the goalpost for the countries is that you, you will need two vaccinations to have fully protection. That's really where it's different to some of the previous mm -hmm. uh, previous strains, right? Where, where one dose actually gave quite a lot of protection. That's why you saw the UK having this dosing regime with like very long time between the first and the second dose. Yeah. But that, that no, is no longer a valid strategy with the new strain. And what makes the US maybe a bit different than what is happening in Europe, maybe I'm just trying to make myself feel better. Um, are hospitalizations and deaths rising yet in Europe? And if not, when would we expect that to happen? Yeah, so no, we're not we're not seeing any any concerning trends there. But you have to you have to think of it. First you have the first you have the, the, the variant spreading, then you have the infection that shows up in the testing numbers, then you have the hospitalizations and the mortality potentially. But I would say we, we we're not anywhere the same situation as we were in, in the winter because we have the biggest proportion of the high uh, high risk groups, the elderly population, are vaccinated. So we're unlikely to see anything near that. And I don't think we'll see uh, uh, lockdowns uh, like that, but but we will probably see rising infections uh, in the coming months and potentially also rising hospitalizations. And I think U.S. Uh, U.S. is an interesting case because U.S. the problem in U.S. is not so much vaccine supplies, right? It's really a demand issue now in in the U.S. and 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 I think that that is you know even potentially even more concerning because with this new variant you need to get to a 70 75 percent fully protected population to have anything close to herd immunity. Yeah. And that, that seems like a goalpost that's quite far away also in the US at the moment. So in terms of what you see happening with the Delta variant in the United States, what are you expecting? So I, I will expect the same patterns over the coming months. That will um, that will be the dominant uh, that that will become the dominant strain. That seems like it's it's almost like a law of nature, right? The more transmissible the the variant mm -hmm. is, the, the more it will spread and to take over the uh, the previous ones. And most likely, we will see another variant coming and and take over the Delta variant uh, over time. There already are some reports. So, um, but so, 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 U.S. has to really push forward the with the vaccination, and I think now it's about, about uh, really looking at the demand side of things. How do we overcome the hesitancy in various groups across the U.S.? What can the federal and local state do to to uh, to achieve that? Because we we modeled the current vaccination rate numbers, and you're actually looking into uh, end of October before. Uh, the U.S. has vaccinated 70% yeah. of its population, so it's much later than we uh, anticipated because of these uh, hesitancy uh, seems to have been kick kicking in. Rasmus, one final question. One of the narratives that started to emerge here in the U.K. is that we are in potentially for a very tough flu season as well. Do you model that? Do you see that expectation uh, as well uh, once we start getting into October, November? Is that, are we going to be facing this on two fronts? Last year, we didn't have a flu season. This year, it could come roaring back. And if that happens, what does that mean? Yeah, so so I think that that's a great question, and um, yeah, we, we do we do look into into that, and there's less general protection against flu because we didn't have it last year. The, one of the big question marks is can we produce enough vaccines for uh, for for the flu season fully? And because there are concerns on the supply chain that some of the the massive ramp up on the production 
of um, uh, of COVID vaccines has negative spillover on the flu vaccine. So there could potentially be a supply. But then also we need to get people in and get the vaccinations. I think the combined shots, if you could get a, a COVID shot, COVID bo booster, and a flu vaccine at the same time as there's a lot of research going in, that would be quite a quite a, a mm -hmm. big deal. 